Well, Happy, thank you so much for joining the podcast. And also, I want to thank you personally, because we had a few hiccups along the way, but I'm going too far behind the scenes, planning versus not planning versus whatever. And I thank you. I got to I got to get I got to give it up to you, mainly because I wanted to talk to you about your new project. It is Heartbreak Season. The EP comes out um, 10, 17. But before I get into all of this, Happy Hoffman, a person. Yes. Who has mastered, well, music, inspiration, food, travels, the singer songwriter, yourself based out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Boomer Sooner, I give you credit. And um, my new, new favorite NCAA player, General Booty. That is his name. <laughs> that is his. Wow. I mean, how could he not be your favorite with a name like that? That's amazing. Now, here's the crazy part. His tag team partner, Joshua Eaton. So. That's amazing. The University of Oklahoma has a one-two combination of, you guessed it, Eden Booty or Booty Eden. I wish I was making this up. You can't make it up, really. It's too good. That's who they are. But I give I give OU all their credit. But there by go. way of Memphis, Tennessee, Happy Hoffman, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Sam. It is such a pleasure to be on the podcast today. Thank you for having me. If you have never done any homework about my podcast, that last interaction, this is it. <laughs> this is it. We're going to have some fun today. Oh, let's. <laughs> I mean, in the first two minutes, we talked about booty eating. Or eating we booty. <laughs> who Either eat. or. Either or. You like offense or defense? What are you like? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But I know you see my Eastern Michigan hat. I got to rep my guys. It is football season, depending on who you are. I mean, I rock the ring, but I know a little bit about it. And when I say I rock the ring, my wife is in the other room. It's cuffing season. It I've is. been cuffed for a while. You see the ring? This is the uh, Steph Curry, um, you know, I was doing yard work ring, the classic boys. But let's talk a little bit more about heartbreak season. Heartbreak uh, season, on, yes. On seven, on the seventh of October, heartbreak season has begun. I gotta know. I mean, I listened to a couple cuts. You're totally speaking from your heart. Tell me a little bit about heartbreak season. Well, heartbreak season is the name of the next single that I'm putting out later, um, mid October. And, and it's also the name of the EP that I'm putting out in early November. Um, it is, it encompasses, so, you know, heartbreak season, it kind of sounds like a sad thing, but to me, it's, it's really an exciting thing. It sort of represents this moment of, um, of anything is possible, anything can happen. Instead of a sad connotation, I kind of see it as like an exciting, as a sassy um, sort of heartbreak season, you know, it's like, okay, we're, we're getting our hearts broken. We're breaking hearts and we're, we're figuring it out. <laughs> I gotta be honest, um, when I heard heartbreak season, I didn't look at it on the other side as the heartbreak er. So yeah it, yeah, it does kinda look at it that way, but you have been active in so many realms of music itself. Um, and I and I talk about the music and inspiration, food and travels, and we're about to jump into that. But I want to know what was the origin story? Where did you start? Where where does the start of the writing, producing, and playing music? Where does that come into you as a young lady? Was just like, yeah, I can do this. <laughs> so I grew up in Memphis, Tennessee, a music town. I was always surrounded by music. I was in um, music lessons since I was a kid, and I was dancing and singing before that. Um, and it, it really became my path professionally by accident. While I was in college, I started getting these 
gigs in the in the religious Jewish community to travel around the country and around the world, leading services, leading ritual, singing. And before I knew it, um, I had I, my full time gig was a was a musician um, and really on the road, you know, sometimes 30 weeks a year. Um, just and I loved it. You know, I saw it as a I felt so grateful to do what I love and to be in service and to make a living doing what I love. Um, I was in a band for six years, an indie folk duo with my boyfriend and an extremely talented musician and songwriter named Eric Hunker. And we, um, we, tra like we, we traveled the, the world and the country. We put out two albums. And um, when that relationship ended, I knew that it was time for me to come into my own as an artist and to, um, to really come into my own as, a, as an individual, as a, as a person, as an adult. And um, that's when I, you know, that's when the stories from this album really started to come to life. Um, and I ended up writing this album with a dear friend, Ori Rakib, uh, or Iro Music, um, this past January, in the dead of the winter in Brooklyn. You can imagine the scene. Um, yeah, cold. Um, cold, and that's when we were writing these songs. Um, but yeah, I mean, like, I hear it in a way, and you kind of touched on some of the things I want to ask you about, but... Um... Well, let's let's do this. Let's let's extrapolate your answer, and I'll come up with new questions as we do that. But um, when you were a little bit younger, you were part of a cover band, Happy in the Illinois Illinois. Did I say that right? You did. Happy in the Illinois. <laughs> in the Illinois. Sorry, in Bloomington, Indiana. Now I know when you sit back and you're in a cover band, you guys get a chance to jam. You guys get a chance to do your thing. What were some of your favorite songs to cover? What were your influences? What made you like feel alive? Especially because one of the rules of a cover band, you better play a song that the crowd could get into as well. Oh, absolutely. Oh, that was an amazing experience, first of all, putting that band together and leading that band. Um, I felt like, you know, I was in school at IU in Indiana. And I, I felt like working with that band and, and making all of that happen was a course in and of itself, knowing that it was setting me up for what I wanted to do. Um, some of my favorite covers that we did in that band, um, that song, You Make My Dreams Come True. Oh, okay. I mean, we okay. did all kinds of music. I'm with Rock, you. Yeah, Hall and Oates, we did... We did a song by Muse that I loved. We really did all sorts of, of songs. Um, we did a cover of Dancing in the Moonlight. I like um, that. And we did a, I'm pretty sure we did a I Want You Back cover, a Michael Jackson cover. Um, but really, I just, I mean, I had so much fun learning how to, to engage a crowd and really how to to form a band and work with a work with a band, um, that was that was an amazing chapter. Okay, and working with that band, and granted your um, Indiana roots, I think I need to ask this question: Did anyone in the band, yourself included, have a Bobby Knight moment when things didn't go your way? They might throw a chair. It might. Anybody have a Bobby Knight moment? Yeah, yeah, we're going to Indiana. Nobody actually had a Bobby Knight moment in that band. They were all so chill. <laughs> they were, they, you know, I found, I found those guys. They were looking for a singer and I was looking for a band. And they were, we were all just having fun. They were excited to play. I was excited to play. Um, nobody had a Bobby Knight moment, though. Sorry, I know you wanted a dramatic answer. No, but... I don't. Like, I'm not. I'm not like um, gotcha journalism. But the reason I the reason I bring up a Bobby Knight moment, other than the total Indiana connection, is this: 
I heard that with that band. Now you kind of dip your toe in it a little bit. You know, the duo of Eric and Happy. Now Google it if you want to find out what happened. <laughs> However, speaking of Bobby Knight moments, because of the disillusion, because of the things, things fall apart. I'm a grown up. I get it. That brought heartbreak season. And anyone worth their salt, and I'm sorry, I'm putting out my privilege right now. I got taste, a taste of heartbreak season. I heard it a little <laughs> bit for this interview. It was a couple Bobby Knight moments. Just saying. Just, hey, you wrote it. You felt it. This is coming from you. Tell me if I'm lying, if I'm lying. But yeah, there was a few Bobby Knight moments. So I'm very curious. I'm not saying my man had all to do with it, but I would imagine if and if this is fair, if I'm being if I'm full of shit, just tell me. <laughs> it was an amalgam of stuff he's done, stuff you have dealt with, stuff you are just having spinning around in you to make this hauntingly beautiful EP where it's it's one point of hope, love, and another point of, yeah, watch out. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great way to put it. I will say um, that relationship was so beautiful and set the standard for what I'm looking for in relationship. Um, <laughs> there actually weren't many Bobby Knight moments in that relationship. Well, I'll talk about the Heartbreak Season EP because yeah, exactly. that whole so album the was Bobby season, Knight. For sure. That, there, is, um, there are references to other, like, other relationships and flings after, after that one. Um, and there were for sure, you know, you, you, you just sometimes you meet these people, you meet people and they're not ready to to be in the kind of relationship you're ready to be in and or they they haven't had experience of what a really like um healthy and solid relationship feels like so but i will say one of my favorite songs that i've written on heartbreak season um is called goodbye and that that you know that's not a bobby knight moment but that is no, it isn't. That is my heart right there. And that is a um an an ode to that relationship. Now so. I'm glad you brought that up. It's almost like you're reading my notes in front of me. Because <laughs> when you bring up a song like Goodbye, um, one of the things that I thought was just plain fascinating um during your time with Eric and Happy and uh some of the things you have done, you spent a good chunk of time performing around the world, whether it be Jewish spiritual, where it be just playing healing music inspired by your Jewish heritage in places like Auschwitz, again, kudos to you, uh, mm -hmm. Argentina, Russia, the UN. And when you go off in these uh, places that, um, there's a lot of strife, troubles, and they have their own issues. And you're being this calming voice and being this healing voice. What is it like? What do you feel? Or is it appreciated? Or is it kind of like, all right, that's a good song, but this is real life? Or is it a combination? Yeah, I, I would say doing that work around the world, um, I feel in deep service and I feel like my my gifts are appreciated and received in the way they were you know they were meant to and the reason why I'm one of the reasons why I'm here so I would say that those experiences have um have been some of the most meaningful in my life connecting with people around the world who are just hungry for for connection, hungry to connect to each other and to their own heritage, to their own spirituality. And when I'm in some of those moments, all that I can do is, is be a vessel for that to happen. You know, I can, 
I can know all the words, I can know all of the, the music. And in the moment, um, for example, when I was singing in Auschwitz multiple years at this big ceremony, um, I felt this, um, this comfort just knowing that what I'm doing is, is bigger than me and I'm gonna be supported. Um, knowing that, you know, my, my spirituality just has to flow through me in that moment. I don't have to work. I don't have to think about, um, singing every note, right. Because it, in that moment, I know that it's just going to happen. So I do feel like, um, the, that my work in around the world has been appreciated. And I'm so grateful for the relationships that I've made with people around the world and the, the organizations and communities that have allowed me to do that work, who've trusted me to bring me in to, to do that. Now, hearing that, I always at my, whether it be gospel, whether it be Christianity, whether it be Jewish, whether it be whatever your faith is, I always love asking this question because there's always, there is never the same answer when you make the jump. And that jump is going from being more of a spiritual artist, in this case, more secular artist. What was the jump like for you? Well, it's a great question. And I would say I'm still, um, I'm still mid jump. And I, I think, you know, you don't just switch in one day from, um, from someone you were to someone you're becoming. It's an evolution, right? So I would say I've been exploring what it means to be coming into my own as a secular artist, what my edges are, and, and knowing that I, it, it can all still exist, that I am still this, this deeply spiritual person who can be in service to, to my community. Um, and so uh, it is really interesting. And I think there was, there definitely was posting some of my first Instagram posts as an artist, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. There was some, some excitement and some fear knowing that it's not what people expected um, or it's not what people were used to. And I think getting past that for myself was one of the, the biggest moments. And, and now it's just, okay, this is, this is what we're doing and this is how we continue and this is where the trajectory is. And it's becoming, it's feeling more, a lot more normal. Okay, okay. Now, I'm you, speaking of jumps, we're going to jump right back into heartbreak season because after listening Let's to jump. it, I, see, I, I'm good. Hey, I'm good. I'm, um, I'm good at, you know, the segues. I try to, I try to be anyway. So musically, not lyrically, but musically, your style, I love it so much. It's a little different than just the instrumentals that are there. But you borrow so many elements, whether that be from soul, pop, uh, whether that be from just vintage R&B, and it, it makes this beautiful sound that is retro, but not old, if that makes sense. Thank you. Where it's, it's a feeling. I'm there with you when you're telling me about this. So musically, how did you just come up with that sound that makes it, um, the way I look at it, I, I, the way I look at it, I look at it as a person who's bearing their soul to a very convenient soundtrack. <laughs> like me and you talking, and then somehow all the music that accompany how you feel is just in the background while me and you talking about what just happened. Totally. So it was really important for me to, um, to make soulful music, music where I felt like that I felt was authentic to me and to my experience. I wanted something that I could move to. Um, I wanted something that felt um, that I, that I would want to to listen to and to dance to, and so that took um, that took you know working with a couple different producers to figure out who understood my sound and who understood how to put that um, 
to build that out creatively. So I was really excited to be in the room with two of my, you know, two now close friends and two musicians that I truly um, respect. And we had so much fun building out those tracks and figuring out what, what sound, what beat um, would be for each song. Okay. Okay. So having gone through this process, you are a part of several groups. You are, you have never been alone on stage until right now. It's just you now. Can't look over no more. I'm very curious. Mm -hmm. How would you describe your development thus far as an audit, as an artist? I mean, we talked about your interests. We talked about your challenges. We talked about the things you like. You're speaking from your soul. But now, right now in the heartbreak season, it's just you up there. Oh, yeah. So how do you define this experience based on what you've been through in the past? Well, um, I do play with a band. Um, so I have a band with me on stage, but you're right, it's me. And it feels, it feels so exciting. You know, I, there are moments in my day to day, of course, I'm, I'm working on so many details at once and figuring out um, both creatively and musically and logistically. And I luckily I've, you know, my friends have helped me have moments where they're like, look at, look at what you're doing. Look at how far you've come. And, and I am, I'm excited. I'm proud. I feel excited by, um, by this moment and to be able to, to share so honestly, um, in my music and to perform on stage. It's so, it's so fun. I'm having a lot of fun and I feel like I've been preparing for this moment, um, for a really long time. You know, I've been performing on stages. I've been working with people. I've been putting bands together and it all has sort of felt like training for, um, what I've been working on this season. Okay. Speaking of the season itself, let's talk about heartbreak season itself. See, segways. <laughs> good. I try. I try. I try you to got it. <laughs> but just, I'm I'm kind of a cheater right now because I've heard it a little bit. But um, what would you want the listener to take away from this project? Being heartbreak season, how would you want them to feel going forward? A I after hearing it, I guess. I would want them to feel empowered. Um, I would want them to feel that going through heartbreak isn't a bad thing. It's something that teaches you more about who you are. And it's, it's a step on your path to finding what does feel good. I just released a single called All I Needed. And thinking about that song, um, it's every relationship teaches you more about what you're looking for, about what you, about what your needs are. Um, and so I would want people to feel empowered. I would want people to feel permission to really feel the feelings of, of heartbreak or what it means to, to not be in the thing that's the thing. Um, and so really I would want people to know that they're, they're not alone and that it's gonna be, that it's gonna be okay. And also I would want them to feel that it can be exciting. Okay. And so, permission to feel all of the, the heartache and the darkness and, and permission to know that, um, that new horizons are ahead. I'm glad you brought that up because um, all I needed, yes, that is a single. And I have listened to that quite a few times because <laughs> I, and when I say I listen to it quite a few times, I'm listening to the words guy. I understand how annoying that can be. Oh, you just got to hear the words. It, it, yeah, we get it. We, okay. But in my synopsis of that, it's just that. It was like, you separate wants from needs. Everyone wants whatever you want. But what do you need? What makes you feel good inside? What makes you, hey, if I don't have nothing else, this is something in me that is non-negotiable. 
me and myself and I at a conference before you even walked into the room. And uh, these are the non-negotiables. And if I could get this, I'm, I, for lack of a better term, can tolerate you. <laughs> whether that be in a romantic sense, whether that be in a uh, cordial sense, you're not going to disturb my peace because these are the things I need from you. Am I off base at any point or am I on the right track? No, you're totally on the right track. Okay. With that said, is it cool if we play that in the audio version of this podcast? Play oh, all I need? Yeah. I think yeah, I should ask you. I mean, you're the person. Absolutely. I would love if you did that. <laughs> so with that said, this interview went a little bit longer than what we thought it was going to be, but we covered a lot of topics. We talked about your past. We talked about your relationships, your globe trotter. We actually talked about uh, Joshua Eaton and uh, General Booty. Yes, we did. We talked about eating booty. We jumped we right in with that. All around the world today. Yes, we did. I need to know, what's next for happy? What's next for happy? Um, I'm so excited to put out this music. I'm so excited to be playing at Austin City Limits Festival um, in October. And um, we're going to, what's next is we're going to go on tour and we're going to do a full length album. Um, so I'm really excited for, for what's in store. And I am, I'm so glad you took the time to chat with me today, Sam. I, I have been trying to make this happen for so long. And wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Before I get into gushing all over you, because I will, but I need you to look at my camera, your camera, whatever camera you got, the microphone set up. In the meantime, before Austin City Limits or in between heartbreak season or after heartbreak season, where can they find you on the social medias? Where can they find you? Instagram, the floor is yours. Tell them where they can find you. Oh, thank you so much. So on Spotify, you can find me under happy, H-A-P-P-I-E. On Instagram, I'm happy Hoffman. So H-A-P-P-I-E dot Hoffman, H-O-F-F-M-A-N. You can follow my Facebook artist, artist page. Um, and yeah, I really can't wait to connect with all of you and for you to hear the music. Now with that said, heartbreak season begins on the 7th of October. Get there. Um, I love it. Um, it was, it's a good song. And I only know that throughout your, you, you seem to, you seem to, I, for lack of a better term, emote. Can I say emote when you're writing? Awesome. And from what I guess, you're an open book. And if we're just going with your experience, sign me up. I'm ready for the ride. Happy. This has been <laughs> awesome. I love your music. I love what Thanks. you bring to the table. Before and after the album. I mean, it's just like, you've already lived a life before you was like, yeah, maybe I should sing about this. Maybe I should write this down. You've already <laughs> lived a life. So Thank happy, you. I wish you nothing but the best. And just thanks for just chopping it up with us for just a hot second. Thank you so much. And you're welcome back Likewise. anytime. This was so fun. And thank you so much for having me and for the support. All right. Thank you so much and happy. You're welcome back anytime. And if you want to sit back, you want to talk about uh, Oklahoma football. I'll let you know. <laughs> Look, they're not my team, but this season I am adopting them because <laughs> How many Saturdays can you go and talk about eating booty and it's totally okay? It's totally, yeah, exactly. This is the season. <laughs> All right, it's not exactly heartbreak season, but that comes on the seventh. <laughs> yes, thank you, Sam. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too. Bye. <laughs>